Well, hello, Lionhearts. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. If you saw yesterday's vlog, you saw that we were inside Todd Fisher's house and he was showing us, well, his mother's massive collection that she amassed over time, Debbie Reynolds, and his sister, Carrie Fisher, some of their most prized mementos. Today, we are back and we are going to explore a little bit more. Today, we're going into the house they built for Debbie. Days with Jordan the Lion. It begins right now. I, I can feel that. Debbie has a room here? Oh, yeah. Her house is here. Well, her, we, yeah, she, she had a... I bet what happened is she had a home since the 70s in Vegas. It was a condo at the Las Vegas Country Club. But as she got older and we bought this place, I said, let me build you a place here. And then you're not alone. And you don't come here. You know, she's here half the time, whatever the deal is. I said, so then you could stay with us and it'll be better. And she goes, originally, we we're just going to put her at, uh, on the house. And she goes, no, 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 no. I, you know, you know. Uh, guests and uh, and fish start to stink after three days. Yes, she's right. And, because uh, we had room here, but, but she didn't, but she didn't understand. understand. Yeah, she didn't want to pose. Never felt that way. Yeah, never. She was not like boring. It's like of a, a guest she that was the last person you would want to throw out. Uh, so we ended up building her this house, and we'll show it to you. I mean, did you? It's um, it's we didn't expect to show it to anybody, so you know, it's a little bit of a mess. We'll show you little things. We'll show. Well, yeah, we'll show it at the end because yeah. I know. We saw something really historic from Star Wars over there. I think people are going to lose their mind when you show us a uh, Carrie's chair and oh, at the office. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The office has more Star Wars stuff, but it has a lot of Debbie stuff too. It has all the Sing in the Rain costumes. Wow. Now these are the Molly Brown costumes. They're pretty cool. Like, Absolutely. That costume next to the red dress is the belly up to the bar boys outfit. Mm -hmm. And when I was a little boy, my mother's arranger conductor would be waiting for my mother to come down. I'd be sitting on the piano with him, and he'd say to me, he'd say, what song do you want to hear? Now, this guy could play any song at any time. And what I always said was, belly up. I love that song. As a little boy, you know, there's certain things that just turn you on, and there was something irreverent about that song that I loved. Not to mention the fact that my mother really kicks ass in that scene. So uh, anyway, that's the that boots and the whole get up from belly up. And then what's this guitar as well? As a, sort of a double use. It was originally used in The Singing Nun, which was a great movie that my mom made, sang the, the film Dominique. She sings the song Dominique. And then down there, she eventually moved it into her live Vegas show and played guitar uh, sometimes. I never played guitar with her on stage. I think she did that sort of after Carrie and I. Uh, it was either before or after. But anyway, around the same, because she probably played, at that point, she could actually play Dominique. Yeah. I mean, she wasn't thinking it. She didn't like that idea of just actors not playing. So she learned the guitar, and that's when I started to learn to play. I was forced into service, but it was a good thing. Be in the house. So we disconnected her, but still made it so she Oh, so, so this wasn't like this originally. No, just okay. so she could get in the house. And this is Debbie's house. Right, so this is full of a lot of stuff stored in here. But her casita. This is her living room. That is beautiful. Look at that. If you were to look, what's unique about that painting is there's a picture of Carrie and I sitting on this very couch with that very painting over us in 1959, 1958. So this was her, she had the same furniture, she just recovered it. She liked this furniture. It's a down thing, she just recovered it. Yeah. But th these are her little things. This is literally her little desk. If you look over here, You'll see things like keys to the city. Well, but look like even here, these are Polaroids of Carrie and I posing together. It's hard to see. That was a Christmas. So those are Christmas photos. You know, look at me. I'm a teenager. There she is. These are her pictures, you know, of Carrie and I and that kind of stuff. You know, so it's just like me and a tree. But you're about to see in the other room is like all these frames. She was big. So like here. So Carrie says, for mommy, I love you, Carrie Francis. So that's Carrie's middle name, Francis. My mother's name was Francis. My grandfather's name was Francis. Obviously, this was not sitting on her desk, obviously. That's my mother's writing. It's so that written on this thing. And so, so I didn't even see this until she had passed, right? So I opened up the drawer and it was in. So she obviously wanted me to have this. Now, so I'm like, okay, why do you want me to have this? What is this exactly? So I'm like looking at this thing and it's, it's it's like a baby in a, in some kind of a womb. It must have been some kind of an award. But to be honest with you, I was kind of like I mean it's cool, but it's it's sort of like why did you 
want me to specifically have that. I don't, I still don't know. I would love to ask her. Um, she does visit me in my dream, so maybe one night I'll dream the answer to why the hell she put my name on this thing. I leave it there just in case something will click. But I have a drawer full of things like that where she wrote me all these notes and I keep digging them up. Try to. I love that her name is on those little things too. Yeah, I think people gave her little things like that. No, I mean, this is, this is how she left this stuff. You know, this, is, this is her dress even at the Greenway house. See, dear Todd. Oh my gosh. That's great, Cousin Dean. <laughs> You're finding all kinds of stuff. Rip Taylor. Sarah no. Wow. Look at that, Marilyn and Sammy. So so this is uh, Frank Worth, the photographer Frank Worth. He's a pretty famous photographer. And he did a series, my mother had, there's a, there's all the certificates to go with it. What's cool about this? <gasps> Giant! Oh yeah. my God, I love that. Well, what you're really gonna love about this is the next series of pictures. Oh, uh, tell me it's all giant all that, George Stevens. This is a very famous picture, obviously, but so there's James Dean with his Porsche yeah. at the racetrack. Oh my gosh, no kidding, wow. And here is here he is sitting at the track, another angle on it all. It was, um, it, it crashed right near my ranch in San Luis Obispo, just right down the road. Literally. Yeah, that's before they painted it. Jimmy and I Liz. think that picture is just, you know, fantastic. Horsing around, yeah. yeah. There's another one here of Liz. That's great. Yeah. Todd actually just gave me this. It's an actual Frank Worth with it. There you go. Notarized. Look at that painting. Carrie, Todd, and Debbie. Debbie's bedroom and Debbie's bed in her casita. That's so neat. On the right, that's the sketch. Susan slept here. You just saw the yellow costume. Yeah. The next one over is important because that's the singing in the rain, good morning outfit and a swatch of the fabric. Oh yeah, that's stripe coming down the that's left the side. Skirt. And then this is Walter Plunkett's designs from how the West was won. And back to Michael Wolf and then Martin Hack, we were just talking about, there's the red dress that you just saw in the front of the house, right? Oh, yeah. And then over there is Plunkett again. That's a, this, And I have that outfit. I have both these outfits at the uh, at the studio. That's the Singing in the Rain piece. There's the fabric. Oh, yeah. Unsinkable Molly Brown. Now, these were never intended to be even hung on a wall. These are fancy compared to most of them. They didn't take the time to get that into it most of the time. There's rare that you find one where somebody goes to that extent. Generally, they're just looser. This is actually on yellow, clear onion paper, they call it. It's nothing about it fancy at all. Look at that, Debbie, so, Liz, the, the kind of like Rodin type Shirley MacLaine. I don't know why it's on so Joan, Dan, that's incredible. This Autograph, Jimmy Stewart. And, and it's still a sign that got to big thing. And I have to assume the shoes on the left would be Carrie's baby right. shoes. Carrie and Todd's little shoes. Here's a little picture of Carrie in there. And Todd's shoes. There they are, little kids. There's the Debbie's the personal the photos. Yeah, so the headboard right is actually from the movie The Good Earth. One of the Academy Award in the 30s. Oh, this was from The Good Earth? Yeah, we wow. used a set piece and she had it for the longest time and she never knew what to do with it. She kept trying to figure out what to do with it and I got sick of schlepping it around. I said, I'm gonna cut it down and make it into a headboard. I had to raise the roof in here to get it to fit. You notice how the roof is popped? Oh, yeah, yeah. So when we got it in here, I didn't want to cut it at the bottom, so I jacked the roof up to fit the the uh, mirrors. And then it didn't work to center the bed on there because you couldn't have an end table, and she likes to sit on this side. Oh, oh, she liked that, that side of the bed? Yeah. This is, I mean, this is her water jug since the Greenway house. You see this? I mean, since I was a little boy. That's the house I vlogged was the Greenway house. Right, so the, so the, green, the 813 Greenway... This was the water jug next to her bed. These were the lamps next to the bed. These were the end tables next to the bed. This is not the original bed. Thank God, because that would not be good. The writing desk at the beach house. That's beautiful. She proudly brought this painting back from Europe and she put it in the living room and I was about 10 years old. And you remember the Super Balls when they were, of course, out? they were awesome, right? So my buddy and I were playing with a Super Ball running through the house and we threw the Super Ball and it ricocheted off the wall and went flying right through that painting after she had only just brought it home from Europe. So I personally destroyed the value of that painting. My mother had it perfectly restored. However, if you look on the back, you can see where they restored it. But uh, it definitely 
not, not ruined. It either improved the value because the story is so great or just ruined the value. But she was kind of pissed off. But I, I, didn't, I didn't get, I never got hit. I just got a long lecture. And I was kind of like, she sort of blamed herself though. She was like, you know what? I probably shouldn't have left this sitting right there. But you guys shouldn't be playing with a Super Bowl in the living room. There's a lot of expensive art in here, you know. I was like, <laughs> whatever. King out there is Lillian Sidney, George Sidney's wife. But she worked at MGM Studios for decades. She was Greta Garbo's drama coach. She worked, went on to become Louis B. Mayer's right-hand person, a silent first executive in MGM woman. So there, they couldn't officially give her a title because it was considered like uh, inappropriate to give a woman an executive job. But nonetheless, she was the person who was instrumental in telling Louis B. Mayer, check this girl out, that girl being my mother. And they were lifelong friends. And that she became my mother's drama coach for a period of time. and But they were just lifelong buddies and right up to the bitter end. Uh, so uh, she loved Lily. And they were, it was like her stage mom, right? Yeah. Because my grandmother knew nothing about show business. Less than nothing. So this lady knew everything about show business. And she was married to George Sidney, which is not a bad sidekick. So George Sidney, they remember we saw the Viva Las Vegas. Yeah. Movie. He was that director. Uh, he was also my mentor. My mother allowed arranged for me to be trained by him early on and other people. Uh, it, was, it was nice to have a mom who knows people, right? Yeah. But I know, Lillian also worked with Carrie on, on acting. So Lillian had a long history with our family. Mm -hmm. What became the Batmobile movie with Glenn Ford. It started with a kiss, it was called. And Carrie and I went over there. And because it was a movie made in Spain and we were around all these matadors, my mother bought outfits for Carrie and I and dressed us up like traditional Spanish matador and whatever Carrie would be called. And, uh, you know, that was not unusual to get us dressed up at that age. A little later, we rejected the concept. So here was Carrie's nickname for my mom, Mambo. <laughs> Mambo Rama. Yeah, Mambo Rama. But so in here is also things written from me. You can see it says letters and cards from Todd, Billy, and Carrie. So there'd be letters in here from me. There'd be letters from See, there's one from Billy, much later on. Yeah, but, you know, this, so this is the Holy of Holy personal letter drawer. And I, as I find things out of position, I will, you know, I bring them over to this drawer, and that becomes uh, even more relevant. The Greenway House, this drawer is the way she left it. I have not touched it. So, you know, these are her bobby pins. This is her little makeup. This is her little pencils. This was her favorite little eye liner. She used a green pencil like this to line her eye. This is the type of glue that she used for eyelashes, the little duo glue. These are the eyelashes, curlers. Anyway, this is her makeup, and this is exactly the way she left it, from the perfume to the, you know, her little jars with little things. Her in little uh, well, can this cookies. Is where, and... no, this is where she kept her eyelashes, in that little jar. That's how that was. A little pot, whatever. Yeah, well, that's her microwave. And she she would tell you, if she and was standing here, she would say, if you're going to have tea, you must drink your tea in bone china. Otherwise, you shouldn't drink the tea at all. So this is her teacup, bone china. And don't bother to drink tea at all unless it's in bone china. Hot tea we're talking about, of course. But that was my education. Of course, I haven't learned to do that. But nonetheless, I keep this intact for her. So she would make her little hot tea in here. But she did kind of design this room, by the way. I did the makeup mirror for her. This is kind of a movie star mirror. Everything's kind of messy, though. That's why I was like, you know. Here's a Debbie Reynolds robe. Wow. That is so cool. And there's a fancy. Now that's a movie star robe. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Holy cow. Are those what I think they are? Yeah, so this is Debbie's slippers. She it was the only thing that she wanted to keep out of the museum collection was these slippers and the Maltese Falcon. If you looked around this room, do you see a lot of costumes? No. I put the costume sketches in here. She liked it when I did it, but she didn't even think about it. That wouldn't have been. Am I allowed something. to touch it? Yeah, touch it. Because I saw a white glove, so well, I. That's just... how you want to move them around. <clears throat> oh he can my do what he's gosh, doing. Gosh, that's crazy. Keep them apart. I mean, it it really gets down to this. If you if you come in the light. You'll see why loose and some of the seeds, you know, sequins oh are loose. Oh my gosh. So you just don't want to mess with that's, it. That's, I mean, that's the real deal. Those are not reproductions. Those are, look, Western costumes. Look at that tag in there. But you can see how the threading is coming loose. It, you know, they, 
I mean, it says do you the have Wizard of Oz? Do you have out. Do you have eighty year old shoes at your house? You know what I'm saying? That is incredible to see in person. I I can't believe it. In her personal bathroom. Well, so where they normally sit. These slippers are over here. She actually had them out on display when... She had them right here. She had Carrie's shoes on either side, my shoes on the other side, and the other shoes there, and the rest of this stuff was, you know, around it, sort of like that. And there was a picture of her and Dwight in the middle. Can I ask, do you happen to know if she could fit into those shoes? Did she, she ever could. try? She did. She could. Because she's a six. So... These were always her favorite props, I'll just call it that. You know, they're magical props. These are what we call a MacGuffin in the movie business, where you have a central prop that the whole movie kind of revolves around. It's like the movie Gaslight revolves around this dress with the jewels, or the movie The Maltese Falcon revolves around this, this mythical falcon that yeah. we don't even know what it's worth or why. But she always just felt that these were the most magical prop, and it always was special to her, and she always kept these... Uh, after we weren't going to do the museum, especially, she always kept these in her room just because it had a certain sense of magic to her. So when she passed, originally she had said to me, in her written instructions, it said that she wanted to be cremated and had all these plans. And, but when Carrie went first, literally the next day, she said to me, I don't think I want to be cremated. I think I'm okay, and let's go ahead and get a... She didn't want a big sarcophagus tomb thing. But then she sort of said, but now the carry's gone, we should do that. Yeah. And and I I got it, right? So I was like, no problem, I'll take care of it. So obviously, literally that day, she left. It was like yeah. a day after Carrie, you know. So I had those instructions. So I went out and got the fancier tomb and all of that. And at, and then when we came time to what do you what do you put her in? So we put her in her red sequined Las Vegas dress, which was spectacular. Bob Mackey, like the gold one you saw, but yeah. it was red. And on her shoulders was a miniaturized pair of the ruby slippers awesome. sitting pinned to her shoulder. So that is where she is in her sarcophagus, in her red Bob Mackie, with a pair of the ruby slippers on her shoulder. Nobody knows that, Yeah. but that is how I closed her. Would and, I... and Kat did the makeup. No kidding, yeah. that's so great. I don't think I could have done it, but she was detached enough to pull it yeah. off. I could pin the slipper this on her shoulder, but that was actually her assistant's idea. I had forgotten she even had these little pair. And they yeah. were really nice, by the way. These were jewelry. This wasn't like... Made by a jeweler this type. This was not like, <laughs> you know, something you got at Walmart. Yeah. You know, this was like some nice stuff. So that's, you know, like some, that's like the kind of stuff that you put in the pharaoh. Tomb, yeah. You know? Would it be inappropriate to ask how you dressed Carrie? Or how Carrie um, Carrie's was in remembered? Prozac pill. You're kidding. No. So what happened is Carrie left instructions with her. No, I didn't have Carrie's instructions, but she left instructions to be cremated. I didn't know that one way or the other. Uh, then it came time to figure out what do you put Carrie in. So we were over at uh, the, uh, what is it called? Whatever it's called. You know, the place where you are looking at caskets. And yeah. Like thousand urns. We're looking at all these urns. And like, Carrie's not going to like that. What about this <laughs> one over here? No, she's not going to like that. You're talking about something. You put somebody in for it. She's not going to like that. We left without finding something for Carrie. Now we're sitting in Carrie's kitchen, and I'm standing like this. I'm talking to some people, and I'm looking across this countertop where Carrie had baked many a banana fritter and great desserts. And you go across the room a little further, and there's a guest room that's beyond through a little hallway. And sitting on top of a cabinet is a Prozac pill that's this big. It's made of porcelain. It was Carrie's prized possession. Since we were teenagers, she had bought it. It was used... As a, uh, what, do you, what do you call it, a when it, when you're a salesman, it was a oh, yeah, display. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was a huge Prozac bill. And so she had bought it years ago. It was like one of her prize. And she was so important to her that she actually had it duplicated and in, inlaid in enamel into her floor in the kitchen. You're kidding. So that's how. So, so I saw it, and I, and, I, and I immediately went, I've got it. And everybody was like, what? I've got it. Something she would love. Put her in the Prozac pill. I don't know if it's hollow, but give me that pill. So we went and we got the pill, and it felt kind of hollow, but the problem is it's an antique, right? Yeah. So I had a friend of mine who actually repairs violins, like Stradivarius violins. Mm -hmm. I said, I need you to cut this thing in half. And he, he knew how to do it with a laser. So we, laser, we sliced the Prozac pill in half with a laser, and sure enough, it was hollow inside enough, and we put Carrie in there, and then we super glued it back together with a ceramic glue, and uh, you'll see in the press, there's pictures of me carrying her to the service. And, uh, and we, we put her to rest in Prozac, which 
she would have laughed. Yeah, yeah. And so, in many ways, that was things worked out very. You can't use the word strange, just beautifully. Yeah. There was when I was trying to find the place to put Debbie and Carrie. Not an easy task. Yeah. I went to Forest Lawn in Burbank, which is a pretty cool place. I looked at several places, but as I was walking up to this one area where they were going to show me, there was Betty Davis. Yeah. Buried over here, and I thought. That's, that would be pretty cool to be near Betty Davis. Walk a little further. There's Liberace over there. Yep, that's pretty cool. They were good buddies, too. <laughs> yeah. I keep walking. It's all Debbie's friends are out. Then I get into this little courtyard, and there's this mother-daughter thing with this beautiful sarcophagus little thing. And as I'm looking at that, and this is no lie, all these hummingbirds swarmed around me. No kidding. And now, my mother and Carrie, my mother in particular, were fanatics about hummingbirds. And I looked at the salesman. I said, either you are a fucking genius... <laughs> <laughs> or this is my mother pulling this shit to tell me to buy it. Either way, it's sold. So whatever, I can't even ask what it costs anymore because it's over. Yeah, it's done. <laughs> I mean, wow. The, the hummingbirds are like the deal closer because my mother literally had like, she fed all the hummingbirds in Los Angeles. They all lived in her backyard. There were like 50 hummingbirds. Carrie, I have a video of Carrie even in bright lights talking about the hummingbird nest. Looney, she's a loony little hummingbird nest. She's like fascinated by hummingbirds. So... There yep. you have it. So the hummingbirds, and then you find the other things. That's what makes it kind of a, the whole thing. Yeah. I said on 2020, I said it, it, it's horrible, but it's also kind of beautiful and magical. Right. You know, yeah. You know, I'm gonna I was going to ask them. how it was for We're you. Is that a sad them. or it's you're sad, like. It's horrible. But, you know, all these little things kind of were like magical. So right. they made it like more. Ex, uh, ha you know, dealable. It's like, I can tolerate this because I, I know they're talking to me. And one thing I had heard was that that Debbie had said, I want to go be with Carrie. Well, she did that like this far away from me and then closed her eyes and went to sleep. Yeah, no, my mother set me up. I didn't even understand what she was doing. But What an amazing amount of closure. <laughs> well, I, I, didn't get, I didn't catch it, obviously, right away. You know, you forget that's what was said. Yeah. Now you're all in panic mode because she's like uh, non-responsive. We get her to the hospital thing. And then when she actually passes... I was standing in the hallway and I was just like, what just happened? And and then I I flashed on those moments where she said, I need to be with Carrie. And I was like, wow, okay. I hope you're going to be okay, she says, when I'm gone. I didn't know she meant in 30 minutes. Yeah. And I was like, and then I thought about all those last words at that moment. And, I, and then all of a sudden it was like, I can handle this. That's awesome. You know, that's and amazing. that's why I told that story to 2020. First of all, I was watching the news and I was listening to all these pundits talking about Debbie Reynolds died of a broken heart. <laughs> yeah, pontificating, whatever. And then, psychologically speaking, you see Freud believes. <laughs> and, and, I, and like at a certain point, I just snapped. I was like, fuck this. Yeah. I have to go on. And none of us wanted to go on. It yeah. was really hard. My butt cheeks were tight. But you had to know with it happening back to back, it was going to be huge. Yeah, but I didn't. That wasn't what I was even, nobody even thought. I was just said, I have to go on because I have to tell this story because there's millions of people that need to hear this story. They need, it needs to be, many people said to me, hmm, if it's somehow okay for him, it's okay for me. And that was the message that I was sort of saying, Here's a message from Debbie Yeah. for those of you that have ears to hear. And it made a lot of people feel good. That's great. Now, will you and Kat be near them? Have you decided where you want to be? Oh, or? we got, it's it's a family affair. Perfect. That's There's, what I thought. I was there, hoping no, that. No, we bought, it's for 10, I believe. I think it holds 10. We just well, if you got room for me, I, I got nowhere yet. Come on down. <laughs> I'll tell, tell you who's going in there. Are you going there? Dwight's going in. So is Very it, fitting, it, Dwight. It, 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 you were telling me that's what you wanted to have. On top. That would be great. I would. That's amazing. How perfect is that? Singing in the Rain, Star Wars. That's what I wanted to put up there. It's so but, great. But, uh, and I even had a guy do some modeling of it. And they gave me this pin from the funeral by artist Rick Lachance of that art. Isn't that great? Pretty freaking cool to get to see inside. Debbie's casita. All right, my friends, I hope you enjoyed today's vlog. That was one of the more amazing things that I've ever gotten to do 